through the Antioch Rotary Club um, Career Pathways Program. And uh, uh, with, the, with the Antioch High School, uh, with, with their support, with the uh, Lake County Tech Campus, with the College of Lake County. And uh, we have been trying to put together programs of interest for students and families who are interested in a particular topic or field. And while we sometimes get, um, while we send the information out, some students and families who will be joining us and participating actively. Uh, we're also trying to build a library as a tool for the guidance counselors uh, to have available for them so that if a, a student were to come to them and say, I'm interested in a particular field, we might have uh, one of these career uh, panels that they could, uh, they could view and look at and get some information on that field. In the past, we've done uh, police and fire, electricians and plumbers, manufacturing, health services, military, and now uh, uh, child care and preschool. And this one is a little um, different because it came about with a cooperation with the uh, Lake County um, Early Childhood Community Coalition. And uh, Jim Menser, who just joined us here, is, is also a, a, a participant in that and partners with me there. Uh, there's Je Jennifer, how you doing? So. So anyway, this, this came about from our um, having a survey to many of the child care providers throughout the county, and they number about 700, um, and we got uh, over 100 responses back. One of the key issues that seemed to come up was how to uh, encourage folks to get into the profession of early childhood, preschool, child care, and so on, and we thought this project that we already had going seemed to fit very well uh, and that we could we could do a, a, a session here on, on this topic. So we've got some more people that have gathered here together. Again, even if we don't have students on right now, we're building a library that'll be available. This uh, program will be available on the uh, Early Childhood uh, Community Coalition website. We'll have it on the Rotary website. We'll have it uh, uh, through the for the students from 117 and so on. So why don't we start by just going through introductions and making sure we know who we are and we'll go from there. So my name is um, Matt Tabor. I'm a member of the Antioch Rotary Club and also in the Early Childhood Community Coalition. Um, and I'll be moderating today. Michelle, could you tell us who you are and what you do? Hi, I'm Michelle Barkley. I'm the coordinator of early learning for the Antioch School District. And she's here particularly to talk about school-based programs. Um, Scott? Hi, everyone. Scott Leverance, Assistant Principal for Student Services at Antioch Community High School. Rebecca? Hi, I'm Rebecca Holst, Assistant Principal of Student Services at Lakes Community High School. Lynn? Hi, I'm Lynn Allison. I am the child care director at the Condell Day Center on the Condell Medical Center campus, and I am co-president of the Early Childhood Community Coalition. Jim? I'm also a Rotary member with Matt and a member of the Early Childhood Coalition. And as Matt said, uh, with the survey, there were like 110 responses and 80 of them cited inability to attract and retain um, employees is the a main concern of the uh, entities that do child care in our county. Okay, Melissa, thanks for joining us. Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Ferguson. I am the quality manager for the YWCA Lake County, Metro Chicago. I am also uh, the vice president for the Early Child Coalition as well when it comes to education. Very good, thanks for being here. And thanks Jen for me. I'm Jen Pareka. I am an instructor at the Lake County Tech Campus in the Early Education and Teaching Program. I'm also an adjunct professor at the College of Lake County in the Early Childhood Program, and I serve on the board as well. Thank you all for being here. We really appreciate this. And again, I think it's, a, it's an opportunity for uh, folks who might be interested in getting into the field to hear some background information, what the job is like, how you get into it, 
and kind of resources just to help guide them along the way if they have an interest in this field. So we, we're going to start with a panel presentation, and that is we, we wanted to have someone from the center-based programs, someone from school-based programs, and someone from home-based programs. Now, we were unable to get somebody to come in and meet directly with us from a home-based program, uh, but we can talk about that a little as we go on. But Lynn, you're representing um, the uh, center-based program. So could you give us a little background information and your thoughts on that? Happy to. Um, currently, I've been in my present job over running the center for 29 plus years. I'm happy to do so. But let me start at the beginning of how I got involved. In I'm looking at all of you, and I'm probably older than most of you. Um, so in the 70s, when I was in high school, they offered a child development class. Look at it was one of the best classes I ever took. Just child development, spending time with the kids, seeing how they learn and being part of their lives was just exhilarating and happy. And I've always been working with children and some as I grew up. As I went into college, you know, you know, using a lot of things, time to choose my major, my pick my major. Um, interest, but more so than I didn't have to take chemistry. I really hated science. So, and there was this major of human development, family ecology, and I minored in child development. And there I grew from that, uh, working with the children, learning how to interact with them, talk with them, um, and just be present in their lives. I worked in all sorts from the bottom of an assistant all the way to my present job. Um, it is fun. It is rewarding. It may not be monetary rewarding, um, but it is emotionally rewarding, mentally rewarding, and uh, physical draining sometimes, but a lot of fun. And we touch many lives in this field. Did I have something, questions at this present moment? Um, Michelle, could you tell us from the school perspective? Sure. Um, so this is my third year uh, with the Antioch School District as the coordinator for early learning. Um, I um, kind of went the roundabout way uh, to get into uh, this position. Um, I started my career teaching um, second grade, and then um, I decided to go back to school to get my master's in special education. And so I worked with um, special education students in grades K through four. And then um, I went back to school again and uh, got my master's in educational leadership, which then put me in the position to um, obtain an administrative degree and an administrative role in, in a school. Um, and at that time, um, I uh, took a position in my previous school district, was, which was in Winthrop Harbor, and uh, was the director of student services. And um, my time spent there is really where I started to develop a love and passion for early childhood education. Um, in the state of Illinois, there is uh, what's called the Preschool for All grant. And that is how many uh, school districts fund their preschool programming. And um, so in Winthrop Harbor, um, I ended up writing the grant um, for the district, which we inevitably received. Um, but through that process, um, it was definitely a learning experience for me, um, you know, learning more about early childhood and, um, you know, the connection with early intervention, um, which, you know, as, as you go through um, the process, you learn more and more about. Um, fortunately, um, there are a lot of resources that um, assisted me along the way. Um, and I, I had asked earlier about sharing my screen. So if that's possible, I can do that to show some of those resources. Um, so, um, let's see here. So I would say, um, you know, if you are interested in pursuing um, a teaching degree, uh, this is the best place to start. Um, it will provide you with the information you need in obtaining your professional educator license. But then with that, also approved endorsements to be able to teach in whichever field it is that you're pursuing. When it comes to early childhood, um, you would need a, a professional educator, educator's license in addition to um, 
a early childhood um, endorsement. So that's what this is here, this early childhood birth through grade two. And so that allows you to teach um, those ages. I would also recommend um, to become duly certified, which means that you are certified in general education as well as special education. Um, and that is because in Illinois, there is an initiative um, for inclusion, which means that all, all students are included. So you have general education and special education students in the classroom. And so school districts typically look for people that are duly certified um, so that you can service both general education students and special education students in the same classroom. So there are two um, different endorsements um, for special education when it comes to pre-K. Um, depending on you know, how you want to go about it or what ages you think you might want to teach in the future. Um, you know, if you're solely gonna just do uh, early childhood and work, work with students um, you know, up to grade two, then you would look at this um, endorsement. But if you think that maybe in the future you might wanna work with students that are older, then I would recommend um, looking at this endorsement, which would allow you to do that. And this is the LBS one. Um, which would allow you to teach up to age 22. Um, another resource that has been extremely helpful uh, for myself throughout my career is uh, StarNet. So StarNet um, provides um, all sorts of training and resources uh, for professionals, for families, um, and it's free. So anybody is able to attend um, their workshops or webinars um, for free. They also have like a lending library. So if there's things that you're looking for, they also can provide um, assistance, um, you know, financially if you're looking, you know, to fund um, something in your in your school district. There are different regions. So our region is uh, Starnut Region Two. So you'd want to make sure that you're visiting. The region two website um, if if you're um, looking for any additional like professional development or just looking to learn more um, in regards to you know early childhood um, they offer workshops on um, you know strat like teaching strategies um, you know just working with students working with families at this age um, so it's a really great resource um, Another resource I would recommend is Early Choices. Um, so they are the inclusion initiative and they also provide lots of training and assistance. Um, I work with uh, two uh, women who um, are from Early Choices and they have been assisting um, my program with implementing inclus inclusive practices. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, resources on here, not just for, not just for teachers and staff, but also for families. Um, and so this has been a really great resource with educating families um, in regards to inclusion. Um, what else can I talk about here? Um, kind of like what Lynn was saying, you know, as far as satisfaction goes, um, you know, uh, for myself, uh, this is an absolute dream job. Um, ever since I started, you know, working as the director in Winthrop the Harbor and learning more about early childhood education, I started looking for positions um, where I could, you know, pursue um, early childhood and focus more on um, that area. And um, a mentor of mine once told me that um, you have to, in order to enjoy your job, you have to uh, enjoy the problems that you need to solve. And so um, I think that, uh, you know, the problems that, that come up in early childhood, I think are, you know, different than they are in the elementary or the middle school setting, um, but they, they are certainly, um, you know, it, it's certainly a passion of, of mine. Thank you so much, very, uh, very comprehensive there. As I said, we wanted to have someone here from the home-based program, but we weren't able to do that. But just to share a little bit with some of the folks that might uh, tune into this at a later date, a home-based program is just what it says, and that is a program based in a in a in a, a person's home. Um, they have to be licensed in order to do that, and the uh, uh, Department of Children and Family Services is a licensing agent for the child care programs in the state of Illinois. 
Um, one of the things about home-based programs is generally the license is gonna be for a smaller number of children. I think generally around six or so, at least from some of the people that we had talked to. Now they might get additional licensing for more kids to come for before and after school programs, but it generally it's gonna be more of a, a smaller based uh, setup, uh, educational programs still going on and still being monitored and licensed by uh, Department of Children and Family yeah. Services. So if that's the kind of area that you're looking at, that, that is one of the things that is available. Linda, go back to the center-based programs. Tell us a little bit what a day is like. How many kids do you see? What are they doing? What would a person <laughs> be during the day uh, working in a program like yours? You got it. Um, first, let me go for either a home-based or based. there's many different roles. There's teachers and child care assistants and child care aides. Um, and it can meet a variety of needs um, of people who are interested and who want to grow as a professional, a professional, excuse me, in the field and make this a career. Um, for me, um, the, my day consists of um, uh, 131 kids a day um, and 30 staff. We have a range of infants through kindergarten and during the summer we have a school age program. So within eight of the classrooms, there's activities going on. So we're our play based. We strongly believe that children learn through their play. And as adults, what they spend getting paid to play with the children. So it's a lot of fun, but there's also behind the scene work. Um, throughout the center, we have a snack. So you're feeding the children, you're helping them um, with their self-help skills, getting dressed, uh, putting your coats on, um, using utensils, feeding with a bottle for the infants, changing diapers, um, and helping to learn um, how to use the toilet, believe it or not. So yeah, through that, and then as older kids, we work on those pre-academic skills. Everything's a pre-academic. Um, books, um, you turn the page and books and print, editing, and those language skills, building those um, academic concepts. More important, we help the children grown their social and emotional, learning how to be independent, how to take care of their self, their own needs. So when they enter the schools, there are two sections, one or two steps, be confident in their learning um, and be okay to take risks. Great. So Michelle, from the school-based program, how would you answer it in the same way? What do you do? What do people see? How many kids? And sort of compare and contrast to what you might see in a center program. Well, as Lynn was speaking, I'm like nodding my head. Yeah, we do that too, right? So um, we are also a play-based program. Um, our classrooms um, go up to 15 students in a classroom. And then we have a teacher um, and a paraprofessional that assists in the classroom. Um, similar to what Lynn was saying, you know, kids come in um, and they are not toilet trained. So we work with potty training. Um, right now we aren't doing snack um, because of our current situation, but um, typically we normally would have snack in the classroom. Um, we, because we are funded by the grant, we have specific requirements that we have to meet when it comes to the amount of time that's spent do doing different things. Um, and so we schedule our, our, you know, our schedule is built based on those requirements. So we, the students spend um, about an hour during um, choice time, which is where they get to choose um, the activities that they want to participate with in the classroom. Um, and then the teachers engage with them in their play um, to teach them those early and pre-academic skills. They spend um, 25 minutes um, doing gross motor. Um, so we, either we go outside or we also have a gross motor room. So if it's inclement weather, they have an opportunity to play inside. Um, we are fortunate enough to have a music teacher come once a week. Um, so our students also have music once a week. And then they also, um, we also have a librarian. So they go to library once a week and have um, the opportunity to check out books. Um, and engage with literacy that way. Um, and then they also spend time with the teacher in small groups, um, you know, and they'll, they'll have like their morning meeting and calendar time and, and sing songs and do things like that. Um, for me personally, um, I um, am in the classrooms often, as often as I can be, but there is a lot of uh, paperwork involved, um, you know, just with the grant requirements, there's lots of um, reports and things like that that have to get 
filled out and submitted to the state. So I do a lot of, of paperwork um, for, for us to continue to receive funding. Um, and then obviously attending meetings um, with other district administrators. Very good, thank you so much. And uh, you know, one thing we would just say is the, the last two years with the pandemic, has had such a tremendous impact on all the programs from home base to school to centers um, with uh, regulations of how many students you could have in place, how you deal with like the food, you're not, you're not serving the food and so on and so on. And uh, to the point that a lot of the uh, center-based programs and particularly home-based programs really closed down and are maybe never going to come back because if, if kids aren't if parents aren't working, they're not sending their kids to daycare. If they're not sending their kids to care, um, the the agencies or the, the centers can't can't make any money, and they had to lay off people and so on. And I'm not telling you guys in the in the business there anything new, but it's been a it's been a very challenging couple of years for for folks, and we we appreciate all the good work you do every day with them and so on. So so let's move down to some of the educational resources. Um, I also just want to point out that there are opportunities for employment, both with college degrees and with non-college degrees, but there is a certification level uh, necessary for those that aren't college degrees. And we wanna, again, segue then into the educational resources and all of that. And we'll start with Melissa. And if, if you could, again, give us a little background on what you are, what you do, how you got there, um, and some of the background of, of the work that you do. Sure, hi. Um, my background career wise, originally I started as a network administrator many years ago, and then I got the opportunity to uh, be an assistant in a classroom, early childhood education, um, with two and a half, three year old, and I absolutely loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, and I wanted more. I got the opportunity to do my CDA, which is the child um, Child Development Association. It's a credential. Talk a little bit more about that. But as an assistant in the classroom, I said, yes, I want to be a teacher and I'll go back to computers. And I'm always going back to computers. But the love for working with the parents, working with the children, I did not want to leave that. So I gave up the career in computers, which I did for seven years for the government in Jamaica. And uh, I went full force into early childhood education. I got my associate in early childhood at CLC. Hello, Jennifer. And then I went on to Kendall and I got my bachelor's in early childhood education and a lot of other certification as far as infant toddlers go, as far as technical support for early childhood. Um, I have been, I used to work in the classroom for seven years with preschool as well as younger children for seven years. And then I came to the YWCA, which is where I am currently. I've been at the YWCA for seven, seven years. January, I've been here for seven years. I came in as a quality specialist for Lake County. And as a quality specialist, what that did entail at the time was to go to childcare programs, um, licensed childcare programs, which was a little over 700 providers at the time, myself and my colleagues, to encourage them and talk to them about Accelerate Illinois. What that really means, we went into their programs, assist them after they, have been, um, after they became licensed and help them with their environment, help them with their, um, their business in terms of their policies, their procedures, help them with trainings if trainings were needed in order for them to be able to get a circle of quality. Um, from there, I was promoted to becoming the CCRNR, Early Childhood um, Child Care Resource Referral Director. I co-directed and uh, with that, it gave me the opportunity to not just only focus on going into child care programs, but also to have a have a stronger hand when it came to the trainings, when it came to um, referrals, when it came to engaging our community into more into what can we do? What can we do? Um, asking the question, what can we do and how can we be better um, helping childcare providers? We merged with 
YWCA Metro Chicago, February the 1st, last year. And now we are three counties, we're three, three counties in one. We are DuPage County, Kane County, and Lake County. I get the opportunity to basically do the same thing, which is to help the quality specialists. I oversee the quality specialists as well as grants um, for, for Lake County Metro. So that's a little background about me. Um, as far as a stepping stone, I always promote the CDA as a stepping stone into early childhood education. I am big on that. And the reason being, that's how I started. I started with, okay, one class, let me see what it is. And then I'll go back to computers, like I said, but then wanting more, wanting to know, okay, I got the social emotional training. I got, the, um, I got physical, cognitive, and I got all these training. And I wanted more to be able to help the children to be able to help the, the, the providers, to be able to help the teachers. And I always say anyone who's gonna come into early childhood, if you're not 100% sure this is what it is for you, I always say start with CDA because it's a stepping stone. You are able to get a variety of training. You're able to get um, information on what a business should look like. Not so much a director overall, but you're able to get information as to emergency preparedness. You're able to get information as to um, class, uh, let's see, how to set up your environment, trainings to be able to help you communicate and build relationship with the families that you serve and your coworkers as well. So I always say, start with CDA if you're not sure. And I guarantee you, after you start with CDA, you're gonna want more like I did. Very good, thank you so much. You're uh welcome. And Jennifer, we have you. We're privileged to have you because you're representing both the Lake County Tech Campus, where you're an instructor, and also the College of Lake County as an instructor, and also a member of the Early Childhood Community Coalition. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing and from that perspective. So my journey in early childhood education started actually here at the Tech Campus when I was a junior in high school. I signed up for what was called child care back in the day. I might not look that old, but I'm older than I, I look, definitely. Um, so I signed up because I, I always knew that I wanted to work with children. I didn't know what in what capacity but I knew I wanted to work with children and um, the Tech Campus was a free resource for me to go to as a high school student and gave me the opportunity to kind of try it out and see um, if that was the route I wanted to go. And of course, I ended up falling in love with it. Um, I did two years here at the Lake County Tech Campus. I was um, awarded Child Care Student of the Year uh, I won't say what year. Um, and from that is where I met my first and well, yeah, my first director. She wasn't my only director, but my first director, um, Sandy Greninger. And she presented me with a scholarship from what uh, used to be called the Far North Chapter. Uh, they gave me a scholarship to go to CLC. So I started a, uh, attending the College of Lake County. And she actually found me when I was working part-time at Ace Hardware to let me know that there was a position at the Children's Learning Center at CLC. Um, they had a preschool. Um, they used to have evening care. So I started out as an evening care assistant teacher I worked five to 10 Monday through Thursday, it wasn't Friday, Monday through Thursday with two-year-olds to 10-year-olds. So it was a mixed age group while I went to school. And then um, I earned my associate's degree from CLC while I worked at the Children's Learning Center. And I progressed up as I graduated. When I graduated CLC, I was promoted to full-time assistant teacher during the day. And then um, I continued my education. I have my bachelor's degree from National Lewis University in applied behavior sciences with a focus on leadership. And I have a master's degree also from National Lewis in um, early childhood administration. So with that education, I was able to progress up to coordinator of the Waukegan campus 
for the Children's Learning Center. So after 26 years, I left there and uh, took the position here at the Lake County Tech Campus where I started it all because I truly believe in the importance of early childhood education and getting students ready for that hopefully long journey that I have in early childhood and continue to have in early childhood. And then I also ended up teaching adjunct as well at the end when I was left CLC, I continued as an adjunct professor. Very good, thank you. And then we have Scott and, and Rebecca from, from the high school. And if you could share with us some, some thoughts you have on at the high school level, how students who might have an interest in um, this field, uh, what courses they can take, how they can get involved and so on. Either one of you, go ahead. <laughs> sure, thank you. Um, at the high school level, we are super fortunate to be able to run a preschool out of each school. So both Lakes and Antioch offer our first course, it's called Intro to Preschool and then Advanced Preschool. So we are fortunate to have elementary, or I'm sorry, preschool students come into the building and our high schoolers work with them. Um, these, these are classes that students can take, the advanced class they can take more than once. They make lessons for their preschoolers, they plan field trips for their preschoolers. We try to, to mimic um, a, true pre, a true preschool setting for our high school students as, as much as possible. So they know what it's like to, to lead a room, to be in charge of 12 students, to make sure that you know where everybody is at one time. The other thing that we started to integrate a couple of years ago is these high school students have to lesson plan. And they are then, their, their grade and their feedback is based off of the Danielson model, which is in District 117, how the teachers are evaluated. So the instructors um, of the preschool class have really tried to just expose all of these students as much as possible to what it would be like if they had their own classroom, if they were the lead teacher. Um, we, again, were really fortunate last year to, to try to run the preschool virtually a little bit. Um, and this year we do have preschoolers in the building. So they've had, the high schoolers have had the experience of how to make those adjustments and to be aware of the seating charts and your spacing and correcting the mask wearing. So it's a, a really well-rounded program that um, we run here at both high schools. Then when students are juniors and or seniors, they can go to the tech campus. We do have that partnership in their third session that they can take, um, they continue their exploration in early child care there at the tech campus. Scott, what did I, what did I forget? Nothing, that was well-spoken. I think uh, those are popular electives for our buildings. I think uh, a lot of our students really enjoy taking the early childhood coursework, even those that ultimately don't maybe pursue that as a career field. Uh, it makes for a really fun learning opportunity here at, at high school level. Um, and it is wonderful to have a partnership with a tech campus where students that find a true passion and calling in that regard have an opportunity to make that even a larger portion of their learning, their junior and senior year uh, available through tech campus. So that's, that's fantastic. I think it's nice to also mention, uh, we use a platform called Naviance for college and career exploration. And some of the tools through Naviance are uh, interest in career inventories. And so those allow us to help through our college and career search process with our, our school counseling team, identify areas that a student may have an interest in the future and then help them find electives that fit well for them. So when students say, hey, I might be interested in early education, uh, we can help them navigate to the appropriate level. And I think, Matt, coming back to what you shared, right, that there are a variety of levels of education and opportunities for folks in early childhood that vary uh, based on that education, but that there are many avenues for folks that maybe don't pursue the traditional four-year degree to still, if this is their calling, find a role and a place where, where they can earn a living in that regard. Very good, thanks. So uh, kids would be really fortunate to be at Antioch High School where they and, and Lakes High School where they could get these opportunities. Would most school districts have programs in early, early childhood pro, uh, learning and preschool and all of that? Is that a pretty standard at most campuses? Um, I think it's it's not terribly uncommon, but I, I don't think it's a given either. I think a lot of places you may find like a, what they call a child development class and, and where they work more on you know early early childhood psychology and some of the more textbook learning. I think 
our students love the hands-on ability to apply what they're learning in the classroom. So they have some book learning and some classroom days, but then being able to have some very wonderfully young people come into our building and join us and, and really have to execute what you're learning in the classroom, I think is where the real joy comes in for many of our kids. So yeah, so we just say this for anyone who's not, uh, who might be watching this at a later date, check with your counselors at your high school and see if there are programs available, but certainly being hands-on with the children and seeing what you're getting into. Years and years ago, when I was interested in teaching, we never saw the kids until we got to student teaching. And so many people that thought they wanted to be teachers found out maybe they didn't really like kids so much, you know, and you got to get there right away and be with them and all of that. So yeah, Rebecca, would you just add something? The, one of the intricacies of having a preschool in the high school is, is just the, the scheduling piece. Um, you know, parents don't want to just drop their student off for their preschool student for 45 minutes. You know, they want it to be a, a two hour chunk of time. So there's a delicate balance of um, that we just have to take into account when we run the course. And we try to make sure that in both semesters, it's an even um, number of sections, but it's it's tricky at, at both schools. So again, just for information for folks who might be watching this at a later date, high school, pro, uh, pro, high school districts most likely will have some kind of program that you can get um, involved with at the freshman and, and, and sophomore level. Uh, and for those that are interested, the tech campus, and not all the schools in Lake County are connected with the tech campus, but those that are, is an opportunity for juniors and seniors then to learn more and advance that skill on a half day program where they would go to the tech campus, work in the preschool program and learn face to face with children and all of that. And then there's obviously, as we heard from others, opportunities to move on uh, at the community college level and, and even beyond that to getting grad, um, bachelor's and uh, graduate level degrees. Matt, can I say something really quick? Absolutely, anybody jump in please. Um, I so in addition to running a full uh, preschool lab here at Tech Campus, we have two classrooms. We also focus on other careers in early childhood. So it's not all just about being a, a teacher or a teacher's assistant. Um, we touch on all different career areas in, um, in education and not just early childhood education. I have several students that want to become coaches or work in higher ed. So we try and, especially in the second year program, we try and customize their learning experience. So if they are interested in say coaching or working with um, higher ed that we pair them up with a professional in Lake County to kind of shadow them, do an internship to get that feel for if that's really what they want to do. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. And, you know, we, I think we do a pretty good job running uh, the preschool for the high school students, but we do focus on other career opportunities in the field of early childhood and in teaching in general. And then the to, to speak on the college's behalf, um, right now there's a, a lot of great things happening. Uh, we, uh, the college is starting to work on the infant toddler credential, which will help students achieve the gateways credential levels that they need in order to be working in infant toddler programs. Um, and if you're not familiar with gateways to opportunities, I didn't pull it up, but um, it's a great resource. It's what we, we as teachers use in the field to track our professional development and our academic growth. And there's certain levels that you can fall fall into with gateways and some centers require certain levels of gateways in order to be in certain positions. So the college is doing a really good job of trying to get that jump start with the associate's degree and getting, um, I think they're working on the level three. So you would have a level three when you graduate uh, with your associate's degree, but now we have a grant to work on the infant toddler part as well. Very good. The, the program we had today is, is really an opportunity to just sort of dip your toe in the water of see if this is a field that you might be interested. The panel did a wonderful job, I think, in terms of talking about their experiences and, and the opportunities that are out there. Would anybody like to add anything else uh, to what we have already talked about that might be beneficial for people viewing this at a later time? One thing I, I, that came through, though, was the excitement that you guys have for the field that you're in. And if any one of you would like to make some comments about 
why you chose this field, why it's the right thing, and and what you know the satisfaction you get out of out of doing the job that you do. Who'd like to start, Lynn? <laughs> I just got to get myself off mute. Um, it, yeah, I have a lot of fun, and I think being in this field, um, I never ever wanted to own my own center. I, I get that now. I definitely know why I don't want to own my own center, but I so enjoy the families that come in there, the um, relationships that get built, not just with the children and their families, but the staff as well. It is like a family. Wherever you should go in this field, please feel like you are part of a family. And we may not see the outcome of where these young children go, but we certainly lay the foundation for them to be successful. And that itself is so heartwarming and a great place to start that you know you push these children to help them go on a journey to be successful in life. Well said. Anyone else like to add, jump in there? I think the great thing about um, working in my setting is that we are really preparing students to, um, to be in school. Um, you know, and giving them that opportunity um, early on and providing, um, sometimes providing an early intervention for kids that, you know, may struggle in elementary school um, had they not had early childhood. Um, so I think that, you know, that is um, definitely one of the reasons why I um, decided to pursue this career. Um, and I feel like, you um, you know, when it comes to be, being able to provide a service to our community, I think that's one of my biggest satisfactions is just knowing that um, we're providing this incredible service um, for our families and in our community. Anyone else? You know, I, I think, again, speaking to the people who might be looking at this at a future date, um, we, we all hear the stories about how much money people make in the entertainment field, the sports field and all of that. But when you find what you wanna do and are satisfied by what you do, it certainly you need to make enough money to, to earn a living and all of that. But when you find what you wanna do, that's the most rewarding thing. That's where you find satisfaction. When you're doing things for others, when you're seeing, you're setting the groundwork for, for kids to be uh, productive adults and citizens in the country and so on, It's that's, uh, consider those things when you're looking at an area that you might be getting into. And take a look at this field, if you, even if you're not sure that this is where you wanna be. We all make changes in our lives about where we're going to be career-wise. Take a look at it, take a stab at it, see if it's, see if it's something you're interested in and so on. So thank and you. Also, uh, Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna touch on the fact that, you know, there's also scholarships available when it comes to early childhood. Um, I am a product of that. I am a product of, let me share with you. Um, there we go. I am a product of the Gateways of Opportunity Scholarship. That is how I got my, my associate. I was able to get the scholarship. At the time they had, they were paying for my classes as well as they were paying for my books. Now they pay for your classes. Um, so what I, and they also have something called the Great Start. Great Start, which is kind of a stipend that is given every six months. So what I did was I got the scholarship and with the scholarship, you had to pay back 10% um, for each classes, each courses that you did, you had to pay back 10%. What I did was I got the stipend from Great Start, which is from Ingra as well and paid back the 10%. So quite honestly, I went through the entire getting my associate without paying for it. And then I went on to getting my bachelor's using the same scholarship as well to be able to pay for it. So just saying that there are scholarships out there, um, great ways to opportunity is a great way to start if this is something that you're interested in. And I would say Rotary Club of Antioch in particular, we do about $25,000 a year in scholarships for our local uh, students. And not only for college uh, scholarships, but also technical training grants for someone who might be interested in going to a field that maybe doesn't go to a, a college education or whatever. 
and Rotary District also has scholarships available. If you're interested and in, are, are looking for some financial support, find the website for the Antioch Rotary Club and you'll find a contact. You can reach me and um, we'll be glad to talk to you about some opportunities that might be out there. Lynn, would you like to put a pitch in for the uh, coalition? Sure. As many of you who are watching are members of the coalition. We are, um, it's the Early Childhood Community Coalition of Lake County. We are a group of professionals um, who care about children, who want the best for the children and their families in the communities of Lake County. Through this coalition, as Jim had said, we sent out surveys to providers to find out their thoughts, um, how the COVID, how COVID has affected them, how um, DCFS has affected them or not affected them, um, or where are they? Um, so we can learn the needs of those providers, but also we wanna start learning the needs of anybody who cares for children in the county. This group is made up of um, some retirees such as Matt and Jim, um, past principals, past superintendents, Jennifer and Melissa. We have um, the state's attorney's office on board, uh, uh, centers, homes, who am I missing? I don't remember, but a lot of people who work together through the coalition, members, it's uh, membership is open to centers, to homes, to individuals, and it's prorated based on that. We have tips for teachers, which is our training, um, uh, component of that. We uh, have an advocacy group um, with Jim Heads. Uh, we have partnered with Illinois Action for Children in a partner plan act, creating a systems integration type of how to improve the coalition and further meet the needs of the county as well. Um, and we have um, annual meetings as well as um, board meetings. Matt or Jim, Melissa, Jennifer, anybody, did I forget anything? No, I, oh, I did. One very important thing we did, we finally did this. We made a video representing what quality early childhood education would look like um, for the field. It's inclusive, it's for all, um, and it's engaging for parents. And that's located on our website. Our primary <laughs> purses, pers uh, purpose is to advocate for all the child care agencies in Lake County, especially through legislation. So uh, part of the reason for developing the video and doing the surveys is to find out what's needed by our clients and to advocate for those things. And ultimately the children of Lake County that receive child care. I was supposed to put the video on to start this program, but I, I missed it, I forgot, so I apologize, but you can get it at the website. And we really, as, an, as a coalition, would like to reach out more to the school-based programs and all of that. Michelle, we'd like to talk with you a little bit further about this, and maybe we can set up something um, with, with other uh, school-based programs um, in, in, the, uh, in Lake County and see how we might be able to be of an assistance uh, working with, uh, with the school-based programs more so than we do at this point in time. So, so I think that kind of concludes where we are at this point. Thank you so much. I think you all did a wonderful job of, of, uh, of sharing with uh, hopefully folks that will look at this at a later date, the, the opportunities within this field and the, uh, um, the satisfaction that you get out of doing this job. So with that, we'll sign off at this point. Thanks again so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Matt.